Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to usher you in into the weekend. It is the first weekend in September. I have your art guide for downtown Missoula, other events, and a bunch of funny videos and fun clips from our summer camps. We're going to have some uh, a uh, surplus of videos coming into this season as we're diving into our stop animation and drop-ins, which are starting tomorrow, Saturday, every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. It's free for kids age 8 to about 14. It's a great way for kids to get involved with uh, editing, production, stuff like that, but for the most part, it's all about stop animation. So they get to play with Legos, army mans, and all sorts of other uh, toys and objects they can bring in to bring inanimate objects to life through the power of stop animation. So that's my pitch, and I'm sticking to it. Up next, we got to talk a lot about some of the news stuff. We're kicking things off with something that I literally just looked up to this just this morning, and I think this is a, a K, this is a KPAC story that was picked up by Missoula Current. I like to refer to Missoula Current now and again because they are pretty good about collecting some news items and actually uh, giving credit where credit is due. Um, so in Anaconda, a restoration effort is, be, is, taken, is being taken underway for an Anaconda motel that was built in 1880. Of course, this was part of the whole like uh, big uh, uh, copper boom that happened in Butte. And through this money, they're able to create such a huge uh, hotel and experience for a lot of people to do. Now they're restoring it to its former glory, and it's going to be quite a ways. So the Montana Hotel in Anaconda was built in 1888 by Marcus Daly. He wanted Anaconda to become the capital of Montana and thought the hotel could persuade opponents from thinking Anaconda was only for the working class. So a couple things happening there as well. But one thing's also happening is that there is a big step in the Amazon labor movement. Staten Island made history as one of the first modern union movements of our generation. Recently, a judge knocked down any argument from lawyers from Amazon had against the formation of, and many uh, lay efforts to stop the union have failed. Well, workers in Staten Island voted in favor of unionizing by more than 500 votes, delivering a breakthrough victory to an upset grassroots group known as the Amazon Labor Union. The group is run by and current former workers of the warehouse known as the JFK-8. NPR reported late Thursday that the uh, National Labor Relations Board will make final decision to welcome Staten Island Amazon Union into the fold, thus solidifying further efforts to create more union, uh, unions for workers across this nation. Alabama uh, is also one of the examples of one of the first uh, groups to start to try to put a union together but they were fo uh, foiled by uh, union busting tactics, which by as a result, the uh, NLRB was able to uh, roll the ballots contested by both the union and Amazon, which could sway the result of the election. The agency is also weighing in accusations of unfair labor practices by retail, wholesale, and department store union that has trying to organize Alabama wor warehouse workers. Um, Christian Smalls is one of the labor unions, unions that uh, basically Amazon discounted because he was black, uneducated, and would be an easy foil. Unfortunately for them, the, he was able to uh, get a grassroots movement and going and getting that Staten Island um, union done as well. So NPR kind of glossed over that detail of how important this particular person was. So uh, apparently Oregon has a Mount Swastika. Yes, the story comes at the heels of updating the name, which was given to a mountain in Oregon in the early 1900s. Just so you know, this is well before the Nazi party. So FYI, swastikas are a sign of peace, but a symbol of the Nazi party out of Germany has forever tainted it. So many, uh, so the name may change and be replaced with Mount Halo. This is actually kind of on the heels of a rescue effort where two hikers kind of got lost in the woods and they, they found them in the mountain. It was like, wait a minute, what, Mount Swastika? Okay, that's weird. That's exactly how I'd react to it as well. So there's some interesting facts going into that moving forward as well. So now we're going to be talking about a lot of floods. There's a lot of floods happening, not only in America, but around the world. And Pakistan was hit with one of the biggest floods. With almost three months of rain straight, uh, a third of their country is now officially underwater, according to a Channel 4 London reported. Uh, after nearly three months of in, in, uh, insistent rain, much of Pakistan's farmland is now underwater. This flood alone has accounted for over 1,000 confirmed deaths. Um, this flooding alone, but flooding throughout this whole year has accounted to 1,700 people uh, death in Pakistan. Pakistan, as a result of rising food costs, will also have to deal with massive food shortages as a result of the devastation to the farmland. Speaking of devastation, remember that uh, flood near Yellowstone? Uh, late, uh, last June, eastern Montana saw a major dump of rain resulting in roads 
roads being destroyed and closed as a result. Latest news, however, has shown 90% of roads are now open to the public. North and northeast entrances uh, closed to visitor vehicles, open to approve commercial tours through the Yellowstone National Park. So, and more floods. Mississippi, like other places, has been dealing with flooding, but they also have a broken infrastructure in terms of water. Jackson, Mississippi, the governor of Mississippi, Tate Reeves, said Monday night that he is declaring a state of emergency after excessive rainfall exaggerated the problem in one of Jackson's water treatment plants and caused lower water pressure through much of the capital city. Thus, people can't even flush their toilets. They are on a uh, boil water um, uh, emergency. So right now, the National Weather Service said that the Pearl River has uh, crested at about 35.4 feet, which is uh, 10.8 meters. That is short of a major flood stage level of 36 inches. Water quality has forced health departments to tell residents to boil water to make it drinkable. This was uh, put into place in July, well before this flood really made its devastation. So not enough water for their infrastructure for flushing toilets or putting out fires. So it's a huge emergency that's happening in Jackson, Kentucky. Um, two years ago, Jackson had more rain reaching the 36 inches. Although it wasn't as deadly as Kentucky's flood, it left that left uh, 39 dead and robbed thousands of families of their possessions. Nearly a month later, residents are wrestling with whether to rebuild at a place they call home or start over somewhere else. All right, so some coming back to Missoula, the new mayor uh, of Missoula is right on track. Next Wednesday, they're going to be uh, hosting a series of interviews with the six candidates. I am not one of them. Uh, I did throw my hat into the ring. Uh, you had to get nominated to city council. City council nominated six people, and out of the 18 uh, applicants, they, uh, there are two city council members, Jordan Hess and Mike Nugent, who are at many points uh, pretty much a shoe in to uh, get uh, appointed to the mayorship. But let's not rule anything out. We got those interviews happening next Wednesday. It'll be airing on MCAT channel 190. You can find that out. More information. It's going to basically be going from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And each interview is going to take about 50 minutes and it's going to be broadcast on our channel. And I don't know if we're going to actually upload it on our uh, YouTube. So you might want to make sure you uh, wait for that to watch on television. Uh, so far, uh, interviews will be conducted. Uh, Missoula Current covered a story about how Missoula City Council voted to address the Sleepy Inn Motel and some assets gained through the water company acquisition. These sites are West Broadway. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in my city council, which for those who are watching religiously on the city council, uh, West Broadway is going to see major changes from the Broadway-Russell intersection, which will see commercial development for mixed use and also some properties next to the water company, which is just kind of adjacent where the uh, old um, Adam and Eve off-Broadway is. So there's the, the whole corridor, the whole area right there is going to have a major update change with commercial slash residential. It's going to be a whole new neighborhood with uh, emphasis on more green spaces along with that. So there's they had some development and some things going on that like that. So the sleeping motel will be deconstructed, which is a term made popular through the recycling of some of the material inside the um, building itself. So the plan will recycle about 80% of the building and the 20% is unrecyclable. So they'll end up throwing that out. So they will start seeing construction on the site uh, pretty soon, actually. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how it's going to uh, move forward with this as well. And I will talk a little bit more about this during my city council, in which they, in which I will talk about what they're going to do with the uh, Karis Park. I'm sure uh, if you haven't heard already, Karis Park is looking to improve their uh, way to get into the river from Karis. You know, they have that port. They they have a couple of rocks, but a lot of erosion happened there, so they want to make it a little more, more solid that could last a lot longer. So. Without further ado, here is a couple highlights from our horror camps, uh, both of our horror camps that we did this last summer. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. There's quite a few.
welcome to your new job as MCAT's new security guard. I'm sure you're well aware of the recent event that has occurred at our establishment. We here at MCAT care deeply about our staff and want to make the environment possible. For our first day, we'll play some spot the difference with some old tapes. Look carefully. Any movement or sounds can mean that something's there that shouldn't be. Look closely and thank you for your participation. Very good. Keep up the good work. Sorry for messing with you. There were no differences in those tapes. From now on, there will be real for Simly Steve. Hey, I'm Simly Steve. Are you kids ready to learn about similes throughout my day? Today, I woke up as cool as a cucumber after sleeping like a log, but I had to fight like cats and dogs to get up out of my bed. That blanket felt as warm as the sun, and I felt as light as a feather, but I was busy as a bee today, but all throughout work, I was hungry as a wolf. So I ate my and hit my pillow like a bag of rocks. And that was Silly Similes with Simile Steve. Well, hi there. I didn't see you there, young younglings. I'm the sheriff here in Old West County. Johnny Cowboy, and I am the best sheriff in this here county. But well, one day, I was a walking down to my house, and then I saw it has been overrun by the Dust Bunny Gang. I squared him up. I used the magic word, skedaddle, skadoo. But uh, then, I remember something. I ain't no magician. So I squared him up with another weapon. Asking nicely, I asked them to leave my property. And they invited. Therefore, they done exploded. There was nothing left of them. I wasn't expecting that. But then, my wife came home and she said, what happened to my property? It's all scribble scrabbled up. And I said, I'm leaving you woman.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out. It's time for some pre-critic, where I pre-judge a movie based on absolutely nothing but my pre-biases for enjoying movies at one point in my life. Anyways, moving on, we're kicking things off with Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul. A fall from grace, these Southern Baptist mega churches trying to rebuild from the ground up. This one probably has leaning towards the Righteous Gemstones, which is a great show, mind you. So enjoy this uh, preacher trying to preach some more in a movie about religion and comedy with riches to rags to riches again, but find a better understanding for the poor people of the world that would have stadium seats in the nosebleed section. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, they know how to uh, sue, and they don't pay taxes, so please don't sue me. Up next, uh, we got Burial. Welcome to the world of Russians transporting Hitler's fresh dead body to Joseph Stalin in a post-World War II movie in Europe. The guy who played Draco Malfoy joins the cast in what seems to be like a small task made even harder for a group of soldiers tasked with taking the body of the German Nazi Empire. Um, will this plan go off without a hitch? Well, then it wouldn't be a movie. So, of course, everything goes wrong and a lot of things happen. Um, when Hitler's body prompts a fight with a mysterious force in the backwoods of a Russian-German border, uh, Draco is one of the villagers who has a relationship with a woman sniper who just wants to uh, nag the soldiers into get the job done and avoid issues. This is a fantasy, mind you, because Hitler's body was burned after his suicide. Up next, we have uh, Waiting for Bojangles. With a name like Bojangles, how can you miss this? Watch as we dive into yet to another romance foreign film. This one follows a new relationship based on the Mr. Bojangles song. Common interactions are, are a good sign of relationships. Uh, actually, common interests are always a good sign of entering inter into a good relationship. And I'm assuming everything goes well until it doesn't. She probably has some kind of sickness or she's stuck in a hospital. That's what I saw from part of the trailer. I'm just like, okay. And then her kid, uh, they have a kid. I guess there's like a whole thing. It's not like a romance movie. It's actually like a family, like they got married, time passes, they have a kid, kid is being bullied in school, has his own issues, now their mom's in the hospital. A lot of, lot of drama. It's a foreign romance, family, tragedy, things. It's very European. So there's going to be an onset of ennui going throughout this whole entire movie. So enjoy the depressing um, um, foreign films. Up next, we got a documentary that follows a group of Zimbabwean wine tasters channel channeling their inner Karens in this new sport about drinking wine and getting awards for it. This is a serious documentary. Truth is stranger than fiction. Then we got the horror crowd. So these are a bunch of people who like making horror films, but also don't make good horror films. So they made a documentary about enjoying good horror films shoehorned into their terrible horror films. So that's what you can get from this particular documentary. Hey, people love documentaries. Up next, we got uh, brand new dub and stuff. Uh, I'm sure you already heard my voice already with uh, Johnny Cowboy, but we're going to jump right into uh, doing a whole different thing from the 1944 noir film, Blonde Ice. Hmm, do you ever wonder why we're constantly walking into rooms in these videos? Huh, the only thing more confusing is why I have a 1920s voice in this video. Hey, Jimmy, plot, 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 plot. We're talking about the plot in this Oh, yes, video. you hear about the unicorns. Let me tell you about that. <laughs> we heard you knew a guy who knew a guy who knows a guy about a particular uh, rare type of uh, My Little Pony. Well, I've been known to have all sorts of kinds of winged and horned horses, the variety of which goes on kids' toys. Kids seem to like that. Is this a Christmas situation? No, actually, this is for a collector client of- Oh! So they're guys a brony after all. <laughs> I wonder. Perhaps maybe we consider a deal. <laughs> Your silence speaks volumes. Well, check this out. 
Hmm. We have no interest in looking at your booklet of... So you came here for the top shelf stuff, after all. Well, price wouldn't necessarily be a problem, now would it? My client is willing to pay whatever it takes for this particular unicorn pony. <laughs> Perhaps you can accommodate us? I can see that you're a very busy man. Well, I am the state attorney for the uh, state of Wisconsin, so not really. Sometimes we gotta have our own hustle, and this is it. So what if I were to say that I may know exactly what you're talking about? Well, that would about. be a godsend, and I would really appreciate it, because this particular item, there is no price. Too high? Is that what you're trying to say? I'm sure your client was willing to pay out of the nose. nose. I warned him not to, but he's insistent. This isn't something that we can talk about in a polite conversation. And at this point, no is not an option. <laughs> You're not going to rob me, are you? I got connections, you know. You can't extort me. You come in here with your thick Wisconsin coat and your thick Wisconsin hat, and you think you can tell me what to do? You and me are a lot alike. Well, let me guess. If you don't get this pony, he's going to come after you. But we're both in the same boat. Ugh, jeez. <laughs> this particular pony's causing more trouble than it's worth. How did you get this pony, after all? I just heard rumors that you had it. Do you actually... Yes. But it's not necessarily for sale, you see. I myself am a brony collector. Check it out. That is a list of every pony that I've ever bought and sold. There's quite a few in here. Quite a bit. Perhaps maybe uh, there might be a couple in here that my boss would be happy with as well. There ain't no price too high. There ain't no mountain too high to climb. Just name your price and it'll be all okay. I think you should really consider thinking about this. Now where do you think you're going? We've waited this long. We could wait a little longer. Please just don't tell the boss. Oh wait a minute. Where'd he go? Huh? Huh, that's weird. Hey, let's jump right back in to some city council. So we're going to kick things off with uh, every state legislature uh, in Missoula hires a lobbyist for around $38,000 to advocate, advocate for the city of Missoula, whether that be policies Missoula promotes or tax reform, which seems to be uh, the main focus in this upcoming session with the $1.5 billion surplus Montana gain over the last year. I mention this because this is one of the many things Missoula is trying to do to get the, the state to uh, provide funding for more mental health services and expansion of being able to use that money for more uh, things to benefit benefit the state as a whole. And of course, my assumption would be uh, geared towards the surplus and trying to expand mental health funding for the state. So uh, public comment, um, Travis Matier talks about the homelessness and the city's 10 year plan. So some, uh, yeah, th this is what he had to say about the home current situation that's in Missoula right now. I work downtown and so I on a daily basis see the failure um, of the city and the county to deal with chronic homelessness. Um, and so as we were reviewing the 10-year plan to end homelessness, in which I'm actually quoting, and as we are looking at why this community should be voting for the $5 million crisis services mill levy, I think it's really important to be uh, realistic about what's happening. Um, this is the year anniversary of John Henry Perry being shot in the back. He was shot in the back by sheriff deputies, so that's a county issue. Uh, but recently, Dave Strohmeyer, uh, one of your former colleagues, said that the county and the city should really be more, more in alignment. When it comes to accountability, I agree. Absolutely, there needs to be much more accountability, whether it's the city or the county, when it comes to what we're doing with homeless services. Um, we were dealing with um, tax increases that are double digit from the city and the county, and I think there is a lot of alignment when it comes to policy um, and when it comes to failure. Um, I sat in a coroner's inquest and I watched Johnny Lee Perry bleed out right, after he was shot in the back. Now, to be fair, they did shoot him four times with not lethal. So I did um, watch all of the body cam footage that was, that was shown during that coroner's inquest. And I really questioned the crisis intervention training that's being given. So 50 yards away with the, with the amplified uh, microphone, Johnny, put the knife down. Johnny, put the knife down. 30 minutes. And then they moved in. And they moved. Johnny Lee Perry also assaulted Sean Stevenson. Two dead black men in this community that I really hope more people know about. And they will by the time I'm done. Thank you. Okay, 
So that was Travis Matier talking about some of the uh, things that have been happening in Missoula. Um, Travis has spoken out against the private securities Rogers International. And Liam Seymour speaks on the trend of displacing renters for high density projects. So this is a continuation of uh, what um, Daniel Carlino has been um, complaining about in terms of just all these new developments that are happening, which are displacing a lot of uh, um, renters in the city of Missoula. Okay, and uh, state of Montana law only uh, permits a 30 day notice for vacating uh, a space. So there's a lot of things that kind of go against a lot of tenants these days. And over the last year or two, I've heard similar stories from council, if not from coworkers, staff, and in the library who basically uh, live, been living in limbo as they are usually between rental units for months at a time and or on a waiting list for months as well. Keeping a place is becoming harder and harder and the city cannot really do anything. It's just the way it is. Uh, but the uh, comment reflects that m maybe the city won't do anything Think about that. Public hearings focus on the designated revenue streams, which include parks, road, downtown improvement, and tourism districts, which have various re uh, revenue generated through the levies for the central purposes. Many of these levies, mind you, were actually proposed by the businesses and property owners uh, within these districts. Even after establishment, some businesses from the business improvement district can opt out. I've covered a couple meetings in this and uh, remember a small business owner feeling neglected from the benefits, but wasn't able to afford to be a part of this. So Jordan Hess City Council speaks a little bit more about this uh, program. Okay, so that was Jordan Hess just talking about like this is just kind of already in the books and everything's already kind of moving forward with this. Um, in terms of like the budget in general, just so you guys know, is that they always have an, a budget update leading into the uh, January, into the next fiscal year in which they propose the budget in the first place. And so they usually amend budgets, look, work through a lot of different things. They amended the budget from 2022 quite a bit, uh, especially through the uh, ARPA funds money that were coming through and they were preparing for that. And so there's a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, fluid motion with that, but in terms of just keeping the uh, budget as tight as they can, they, keep, they still have room for um, updates and improvements based on money that may or may not be coming in through grants and whatnot. So Vandra, Santa Versica, City Council voted against this last time and this time because she believes that those who do not volunteer to be a part of this district really didn't have a fair shop to opt out. And although some of the tourism and downtown businesses have some out, uh, opt out features, the majority of the special districts still have taxes in those areas where people like it or not. Um, you know, special improvement districts are a, a way that the city has used in the past to be like, all right, the neighborhood will pay 
um, X amount of money uh, per month in their particular taxes as part of the special district so we can build sidewalks and stuff. So that was one of the things that happened, especially in my neighborhood when they decided to build the uh, Eaton Street uh, um, sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> and there was, uh, you know, there's uh, the protest period for uh, any of these districts, but every 10 years they can reassess to determine whether or not they wish to end it or continue moving forward with it. So it's the same thing with a lot of bonds and other things. Um, it's not something that you necessarily vote on, but you have the ability to uh, um, contest it every 10 years. So that's kind of how it was established. The county is also planning to update their safe outdoor space near the uh, new Walmart off Mullen. The temporary safe outdoor space was included. The proposed includes a 30 short term living units along uh, one office building and two restroom buildings. And so these are kind of be like one of those kind of manufactured kind of uh, establishments to be kind of put into place. A storage container will be used uh, at located on the site. The proposal includes general site landscaping nearly three times in excess of what the required Title 20. The existing trees and fence will remain on the northeast side of the site. A chain link fence is proposed along the so all sides of the proposed development site with a vehicle access point uh, off West Broadway in the northeastern corner of the site. And pedestrian connection, uh, yeah, I'm just basically copying and pasting this, but you, the whole idea is that they want to uh, have a more uh, rigid um, kind of thing. It's not like, you know, the temporary safe outdoor space was a place where they put the houselessness or homeless folks there to uh, kind of camp and do all this stuff, but they added more structures there to kind of be a little bit more tangible, but at the same time could easily be removed as a result later down the line if need be. So the, these uh, outdoor spaces are for a way for people to uh, uh, have designated outdoor spaces and get some of the help that they need in, in which they cannot get uh, at the Pavarella Center. And the Pavarella Center does have some strict rules about, um, you know, no alcohol, no drugs and all that stuff. So they don't admit or ad administer a lot of people who are on any kind of substances and stuff like that. So that's one of the reasons why these day safe outdoor spaces were established to kind of help curve that, but at the same time, try to help the people as much as they can. But at the same time, it's a case by case situation and it always has been and always will be. And you just, you know, it, you, you can help people, but if they don't want your help, it's hard to help people. So up next, mayor candidates, although you may already know all the people, here are some of the reactions and nomination. Kevin Hunt comments on the city council member throwing their hats into the mayor position and he reacts to uh, uh, the city uh, nominating the two city council ward members. Certainly a very strong public perception that this entire process is perfunctory and pro forma and that uh, there are six if not seven votes already predetermined and locked up for who the eventual interim mayor is going to be. And I think to the extent that you try to disabuse uh, us of this misconception, if it is a misconception, um, it will certainly suit you well in 2023 um, when people are up for election. Uh, uh, it's a public field, so in fact, there was true consideration given um, this process isn't really uh, perfunctory. Okay, so that was Kevin Hunt uh, kind of reflecting on the idea that we I mean we already know who is pretty much going to be the mayor of Missoula uh, by the time they uh, finish up the interviews. That's just kind of what he's alluding to. I'm not a betting man, but I'm pretty sure one of the uh, two city council members that threw their hat into the ring for mayor will be the next mayor of Missoula, uh, at least for the next year and some change. But then after that, it's going to be an election for the 2023, and that'll finish up the. Uh, uh, mayor John Ingen's term and then it'll do another thing so there's chances of having three different mayors in the next three years so it's going to be interesting here in Missoula uh, and how they're going to do this but uh, the state of Montana has put the city of Missoula in a really awkward position to uh, basically um, uh, telling us is that you have to fill the seat of the mayor within 30 days so having an election can be uh, difficult, but at the same time, maybe there's a way we can change the words in the future so we can actually have an election. So this is about the growing safe lawns. Uh, so in the, uh, the, the uh, committee meetings, climate conservation and parks, this is an informational item in which, you know, they want to uh, basically have the city of Missoula be like, hey, if you're doing landscaping and lawn care, we want to make sure that you just organic and don't use pesticides that could be potentially harmful to humans. So Alison Reitchie's presenter talks about the brain health and some of the green spaces uh, in Missoula. Including our city council, have that duty to protect. 
Okay, so the part of this is the whole idea is that, hey, you know, you put these pesticides down, you put up a sign that says, do not stand on grass, because they're using it to kind of clear out the weeds and stuff like that. And, you know, after the 24 hours that is required, they, they move on to the next thing that they're going to use pesticides on. And, you know, you don't really think about that as much when you're, like, walking on the grass, taking your shoes off, and enjoying the grass as well. I mean, a lot of times, uh, the whole pesticides thing, the reason why it became so popular is, like, weeds. You know, you, you don't want to step on those thistles, and you don't want to, like, you want to be able to have bare feet on some nice grass and just enjoy some nature and that kind of stuff. So uh, it's, it's very interesting how they're moving forward with this. But overall, uh, uh, this was informational, and Allison wrapped up uh, the presentation with a little bit more information about, uh, you know, what their ultimate goal in the end is. We have this great parks and recreation department. They have a really strong guiding mission that includes promoting health and wellness, protecting the environment, and making sure we all feel safe. Um, and the Bright Cities grant has given our city land managers some initial training and that opportunity to put organic land care practices into play on the pilot park. They do so many good things for our community and transitioning to organic lawn care while challenging. It's completely possible. It's within their skill set and it will help us move that mission more fully. Okay, so that kind of completes that section of uh, of the climate um, committee. And so, so folks outside the uh, community signed a petition to support organic li land care and protect human health for, and future soils for land use for future generations. Uh, land uh, Cares Park, uh, another big thing that's happening there is that they uh, reopened Cares Park. Um, of course, you know, Higgins Bridge is taking its sweet time, uh, but uh, Cares Park is... Uh, open, very nice. They got rid of the hill. A lot of people miss the hill. Who cares about the hill? It doesn't matter. It's just a hill. Um, <laughs> and then what they're trying to do is improve the uh, uh, the access point to uh, fund the river. This is part of fund the river campaign and through grants will pay um, the city and also through many organizations trying to raise money that actually utilize a lot of the space like the downtown partnership is throwing some money into the uh, ring about three hundred and seven thousand uh, dollars to match a grant of one point five million dollar in matching funds to not uh, only get access but improve the river banks and address erosion brought on by Clark Fork River. Morgan Valiant, City Conservation Lands Management, talks about the erosion. Okay, so we, of course, as you can see here, this whole area right here is the, the, the whole park is manufactured. So for those of you who, you know, who don't know much about the history of Karis Park, the whole idea, just imagine Karis Park was underwater um, seasonally at different times of the year. And there was a huge island right in the center of where you would see like maybe some uh, stones and some things kind of popping out of the Clark Fork River as of today, just out looking out at Brennan's Wave. But that whole area was pretty much like the center, it was like a little island and then the river would go on either side. And so what, did they, what ended up happening is that they re kind of uh, retooled the whole entire river flow and pushed uh, all the land and everything, everything like that. So basically from um, the Wilma Theater, the historic Wilma Theater at the end of the bridge, um, 
all the way uh, from there, that was where the river would run right through it. So it's kind of crazy to kind of see some of the history and that moving forward. And um, the, the interesting thing about it as well is that we look back in history, um, you know, levees were built to push the water towards the current location and has remained ever since. Karis Park was a manufactured park as a result. Morgan talks about river access from Karis. And from the picture, it kind of looks like <laughs> they might put in a roundabout to get access to the river, but I don't know. I think the picture, uh, it, it might be a little skewed. Okay, and you can definitely see it in this particular picture right here. This feels like more kind of like the idea that we might be seeing minus the city with a mixture of some of this as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting because this is the main trail. And yeah, that is definitely a roundabout they're putting in there. <laughs> Cough. Um, and then, <laughs> sorry, I have nothing against roundabouts. It's just like we're getting pretty roundabout heavy here in Missoula. So. I don't know. That's just my opinion. But anyways, if you want to learn more inf information about this, uh, they got that uh, they got that sweet grant, which will allow for uh, the investment of three hundred thousand from Missoula for that one point five million dollar project. Uh, downtown associations have uh, promised over a hundred thousand dollars in funding. They're looking to, for some more funding along this way, but they're looking into tapping into the open space bond uh, money uh, for. Um, Jeez, I'm losing my brain right now. But anyways, yeah, they're looking into uh, open space for any additional funding that they can't accumulate through, uh, you know, donations and raising money and stuff like that. So they've been pretty good about um, getting the money where it is. And if you've got a chance to see some of their uh, fruits of the labor, you can go up to Waterworks Hill. They have a nice little station up there where you can drive up there. And it's fairly flat for a lot of people who are also... Uh, ADA and have accessibility uh, issues as well. So for more information about this, you can go to uh, engagemissoula.com, but as always, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. The City of Missoula's website is everything that the city has done, do, is going to do, and uh, a lot of permits. A lot of great uh, permits are happening here. I'm, I'm like, I'll go on this website, I'm like, wow, permits. Um, but <laughs> so yeah, anyways, yeah, you just click on the meetings down here, and it brings you up to this whole th uh, area right here. And then you just wait a couple seconds, you know, you know, it's still loading, it has to load the calendar. And then once the calendar is up, I, I usually like to go calendar view because then you can see upcoming meetings, past meetings, you see the month and everything like that. So there you go. Um, without further ado, well, here is an art clip for you guys because it is first Friday, which means downtown is going to be popping with some art.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's kick things off with some art that's happening uh, in the back alleys behind uh, Higgins Avenue between uh, Thomas Marbar and whatnot. We have the Out of Order Art Show with live musical performances, so you, can, you can't miss hearing it. It's going to be in the Higgins Building. 63 works of art on paper by Lady Pajama and Trisha Vision will be on view and for sale. A new collaborative, collaborative zine will be released along with a special performance by Pajama Vision and merchandise available for purchase, blah, 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 all that stuff. It's happening from 5 to 9 p.m. tonight. Most other art uh, exhibits are happening around that time. This is usually the peak hours to go check out the downtown Missoula area. Then we got Artist Shop. Rumination, Rebecca Smith, in preparation for Rumination, she created pieces in integrating experiences that have gained over the some 30 years of calligraphy practice. Their passion with letters has been energizing and rewarding personal journey. They have been blessed to study with instructors through the U.S. in addition to individuals across the globe from England, Germany, Belgium, Tasmania, and South Africa. Sharing the knowledge with the viewers allows them to provide a glimpse into the infinite scope of calligraphy. This show is varied and dynamic. A visual tour into the arts of beautiful writing and this is going to be running all month long through the artist shop then we got healing in nature art show i think this actually might be the same art show from last month but here we go harvest wholesale center is uh harvest continues to host a very special first friday healing event healing in nature uh september 1st 2022 at 5 p.m. at the Wholesale Center in honor of the power of nature and artists who find inspiration and healing through the open arms of landscapes. They are showcasing their creations and stories of healing and discovery. From local artist Hel Leschwatcher, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, Amy uh, Castillo, Susie Weishart, and new artist Irene Gray and Tim Hammond, and more. So a lot of artists, a lot of things happening as well. Healing in Nature art show and share the love. And then we got Missouri Museum is kicking things off with Marilyn LaSawyer. Um, uh, she created a room-sized large-scale installation including a 20-foot, two-ton ceramic battleship decorated with dazzle camouflage which was used during World War I and II. Um, dazzle is made up of complex patterns and geometric shapes in contrasting colors with which interrupts and intersects each other. Unlike other forms of camouflage, the intention of Dazzle is not to conceal, but to confuse a ship's position, range, speed, and heading to mislead the enemy. Le Shore also includes paintings, drawings, and domestic vignettes to complete the installation that was intended to honor veterans, including her mother and father, who both served in World War II. So those are your art guides happening in and around the city of Missoula. Right now we're transitioning into the school year and this weekend is Labor Day. MCAT is still doing our Saturday drop-ins on Saturday to kick things off. Sunday, Monday, the library is closed, but today at the library you get to enjoy some tiny tales and story time at 10.30 a.m. for kids who want to get engaged with reading and it's a great activity for a lot of kids as well. Public Library hosts a series of events geared towards kids learning and interacting with fun and education stories from tiny tales and story time. Friday is at 10.30 a.m., Saturday is at 10.30 a.m. A lot of different days. You can go to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org for more information. Um, Yarns is happening on the uh, fourth floor. It happens every single Saturday. People get to go in, workshop, stitch, and talk with other people as well. Watercolor with Rob P will return later this month. So if you're interested in watercolor, usually takes the summer off. Rob Pelzer will be back and do talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Lolo Farmer's Market. If you're interested in going to the farmer's market in Lolo this afternoon at 2 o'clock, they do it every Friday. I believe they would probably be doing it well until October when most farmer's market on most of these uh, farm stands are starting to kind of uh, transition into the winter months. So Young Adult Writing Group is also happening here at the Public Library starting at 3.15 p.m. MCAT also hosts weekly screenwriter sessions every Thursday at 3 p.m. Lego Club is this afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Just a lot of things happening at the library. And then now we're going to jump right into uh, some more stuff happening at the library. So there's the Montana Landscape Art Show. Uh, this is organized by local artist Braca Tenenbaum in partnership with Arts Missoula and the Missoula Public. So at Missoula Public Library starting at 5 to 7 p.m. This is going to be on the fourth floor of the library. Join us in the Cooper Room for Montana Landscapes. Celebrate the nat natural beauty unique to our state. This show uh, features landscapes, paintings, and artwork by a collection of Montana artists and provides a chance to meet with artists and learn about their work. That's at 5 to 7 p.m. tonight at the library. Library closes at 6, so you won't be able to get in any of the other floors of the library except for the top floor and the parking garage. So, Missoula Paddleheads game, University of Montana uh, is going to be hosting uh, Oregon Park at Legion's Field, University of Montana game. Apparently, the Paddleheads aren't Missoula's only favorite team. Tonight, they're celebrating the University of Montana with old school replica jerseys, perhaps an appearance from some fellow 
named Monty. Anyways, that's happening uh, at 7 p.m. tonight. Dueling Pianos with Josh Farmer and Doug Olson. He's going to be at Stave and Hoop. I love Josh Farmer. always uh, support him. And then when he's done at the uh, Dueling Piano, he's going to be at, playing at Union Club tonight. So Josh Farmer will be all about the town. He's a very gifted musician, and I suggest you check him out. All right, Saturdays. If you're interested in doing some more farmer's market and stuff, it is the perfect weekend to do it, Labor Day weekend. If you're not going out of town, get some farm-to-table type foods, honey, all sorts of uh, food trucks and all sorts of baked goods made from the people for the people in downtown Missoula area. Happens every Saturday, like I said, like farm stands. It will end sometime in October, but you guys can enjoy that well through September. Family fun time at Mizzou Gymnastics. Hey, it's a, a great activity space indoor. Boys can learn parkour, great gymnastics, stay limber, stay uh, active. Uh, MCAT Saturday drop-ins, like I said, is starting at one o'clock on Saturdays one to three every single Saturday until the end of the school year, which we uh, map up with the weekend of Memor Memorial Day weekend. So we kind of match what the city does in terms of turning on the uh, sprinkler systems in the parks because they usually between Memorial Day and Labor Day, that's when they're open. Uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day, that's when they're open. Yeah, okay. Because winter, you know, you, you know, you probably shouldn't have water running in the winter outside. <coughs> Anyways. <laughs> Um, let's see, what else is happening? Imagination Brewing Company has a, a musicians, Omar Kita and Jabari Barra. Live music is going to be at the Cranky House Public House. It's going to be with Blue Shadow. Paddleheads Game is going to be playing a regular season final game. Uh, Paint and Simp uh, is going to be painting at a twist, double, double Toil and Trouble. I'm assuming that has something to do with Star Wars. Anyways, <laughs> live music, Stephen Clement is going to be at the Old Post uh, Saturday night at 8 p.m. Solid State Karaoke is going to be at West Side Lanes. Uh, Fun Center, um, Uncle Funk is going to be at Union Club Saturday night. And then you got DJ Chris Moon at the Bandler at 10 p.m. every Saturday. Sunday is German Fest, mind you. Arts Missoula Global presents German Fest, the annual celebration of Missoula's sister city partnership with Nachargismund, Germany. In, on Sunday, September 4th in Karis Park in downtown Missoula. Admission is free. German Fest began in 1993 with a pledge of friendship signed between two cities by their mayors at the time. Since nearly 500 um, Neckagarmund high school students, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, I, I, this is the first time I'm actually reading it because a lot of times I copy and paste. Uh, high school students have come to Missoula while students who call the Garden City home have a chance to spend several months in the southern Germany counterpart. So it's going to be fun. So German Fest features inclu include authentic German food and beer, Lederhosen, live music, uh, Steins, children activity, and sister city display. And so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening. And I wa also want to mention that if you guys are not doing anything on Labor Day, Labor Day at Bonner Park at 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., they're doing a Labor Day picnic. Come join the celebration of Labor Day on our annual Labor Day picnic. Bring friends, family, coworkers to this family-friendly event. And enjoy free a free hamburger, hot dog, chips, ice cream, and beverage. They'll be having live music and speakers for entertainment. Take a moment to celebrate you and other workers in the community sponsored by the Missoula Area Central Labor Council and Union. So uh, Tuesday, uh, you know, uh, Missoula Public Library will be uh, uh, doing um, a lot of these activities, you know, uh, um, a lot of presentations, but I think this is important because this is through NAMI Missoula of National Association of Mental Illness uh, part in Missoula. And they're talking about survivors of suicide and it's happening at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday night. Voices of Hope, Lights in the Darkness. All right. So if you want more information about events and more, um, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is like, hey, what's going on in Missoula? Oh, MissoulaEvents.net. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can go to this website to find out some of the events, some of the uh, bands, and some of the things that are happening in the downtown Missoula area. It seems like it's going to be a pretty light weekend as well, but it is Labor Day weekend. And I'm assuming that a lot of people are going to take this opportunity to go to Silverwood this weekend as well, because that always seems to be the case. A lot of people always seem to go to Silverwood during the Labor Day weekend. Anyways, that's that. And I want to thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.